In this video, I'm going to show you how to hide or enable or deactivate the auto post generated by the system. Now, what is an auto post? Auto post are the post which automatically gets created based on the event by the system action. So take, for example, if you have created a case, now system automatically will uh, add a record which will say case was created by so and so person or if a case gets assigned to some person, then system will automatically put this record, like case was assigned to someone. Now, what if you want to configure this information? Yes, you can activate or deactivate or enable or disable this particular posting. And you can even customize this posting as per your need. Now, just to uh, give you a brief uh, introduction about what a post, how the post is structured. So as you see over here in this particular section, posts now posts can have uh, post has by default there are three different tables which is available in the dataverse backend called as posts post configuration and post rule configuration now out of that post table is not visible when you navigate through dataverse but post configuration and post rule configuration are visible post will actually store the posts which you want to display in the system now this is customized post post configuration will store the configuration information of the table so take for example if there is a case table and if you do not want any of the post from the case table then you can disable at a table level so you can say for any case record i want to disable entirety for any account record i want to disable it entirely so if you enable or disable at a table level, then all the post rule configuration within that particular table will get disabled. Post rule configuration are individual rules within a table. So take for example, let's say maybe case record, case table might have eight post rules or account table might have seven post rules. So you can individually enable or disable within the post rule configuration. Now I'll show you how. What you need to do, you need to go in the back end and go into the make.powerapps.com and search for post. The, the moment you search for post, you will see two tables. As I mentioned to you, there is a post configuration and there is a post rule configuration. Now, post table are not visible in the back end. You can, however, extract that in a Power Automate interface. Post configuration. So if I click on post configuration, then I can see that it's a table. Basically, it lists down the entity name, like say you have an account entity or you have an action card action stat entity, and you can even have a case entity. So let me maximize this and show you. So this is account entity. Now, if you want to just see what, what all things are there in for case entity, you can just scroll or maybe from entity, you just say, I want to sort it from A to Z. And from here, you can actually see the uh, case entity okay now here as you see there are various other entities like card card state item catalog chat competitor contact okay now i think the case entity is called as basically an incident so if you see here this is an incident so entity display name is case internal name is incident wall enabled is yes now when you say wall enabled means any rule configuration created against that case will be enabled so it is just a switch which will turn either on or off so if so first thing if you want to see all the system generated uh, post you need to enable this at this level now it is already enabled so that's good so that's from a table level configuration now if you uh, go again in this interface and type in post now we will go to post rule configuration now this is one step inside that record so here the post entity id we will select filter by say maybe case and click on apply now here you will see that there are various post rule configuration and here individual items are either uh, active or inactive now as you see here case closed for a contact 
case routed to queue new case for a contact new case for an account so like this you can have various things now if a new case is created for a contact or for an account if you just turn want to turn this off then you can turn that off but not from here here you can't edit this record you can edit this text but you can't edit this okay so in order to make it active or inactive what you need to do is first thing you need to go into your whatever application you have say model driven app or say in my case it's customer service hub application now what i will do i will click on setting over here and click on advanced setting now the same table which i showed you can be configured under setting so there is something called as activity feeds configuration and activity feeds rule activity feeds configuration is again uh like a table level configuration so at a table level if you say if i click on c then i can see that this is case i it is enabled it is wall enabled now if i want to disable all the case thing uh then i can deactivate this from here okay so this is at a table level second thing if i want to disable or enable individual items then i can go into that uh, activity feeds rule and i can activate or inactivate so take for example if there is a new case for an account if i want to activate this i'll just select here and i'll click on activate and this will then enable the activation now to see the result practically i'll just what i'll do is like i'll just click on to case i'll click on new case now what i'm going to do i'm going to create a new case okay so case maybe 19th march okay and i will the customer is maybe someone from adventure works okay and what i've done is i have saved this record now now if you see here this timeline here it says case created by girish for account adventure works good i will change the owner i will change the owner from girish to say maybe alex and once i do that i'll click on save and then in the wall it should put a record that this case was assigned to alex so if you don't see the result click on refresh timeline then you will see case was assigned to alex i can even uh, add this item to a queue so i'm adding this item to a queue and this will also add a wall record i will go ahead and resolve the case and this will also add some information into the wall as you see here this information is now added i can reactivate the case and if i just refresh the timeline i can see that item is added over here it says case reactivated by so and so now these are the recent cases as i see over here what i can do i can do other things as well from here but i'm not going to show you that but just to give you the context like if i want to see in an expanded view this is how the timeline will look like so case created by case was assigned to case was added to so take for example if you have a requirement that we don't want to use what is there or what is provided by the system over here so when a case is created i don't want to see this record or when a case is added to the queue i don't want to see this record so if that is the scenario then what you need to do you need to first identify what is the action so it is case creation for an account case addition to the queue let's go ahead and find that in the activity feed rules so case creation for an account so that is new case for an account i'll just select this and i will deactivate this and it will automatically get deactivated another one was case routed to a queue i will come here click on deactivate and this will get deactivated now if i don't want to see anything from case record rather than individually deactivating from here what you can do you can go to settings and click on activity feeds configuration and then from here you can do it at a bulk so if you just say for any case record i don't want anything to be put into the timeline 
you can deactivate that. But we are not going to do that. We have just, uh, I'm just showing you how to do that for individual items. So now here we have disabled case creation by account and case addition to queue. The rest all we have enabled it. Okay. So let's see uh, after some time, like it, if the change persists, then those things should get affected. Okay. So let me create case 19th March second pass. And now here for customer, I'll select Northwind Traders. I'll click on save. Now, if I refresh the timeline, then I should not see that case creation record. Now it's not there. Earlier it was there, but then we have turned it off. Let's do one thing. Let's uh, change the owner. Now, if we change the owner from Giresh to Alex, we haven't made any change to that. So it should post automatically to the timeline. So you should see the case assignment in the timeline as we haven't touched that line item. So this is there. Then uh, we have disabled addition to queue. Okay. So if I add to queue, then I don't want that information to be posted in the timeline. So I've done that. I'll click on refresh timeline. Nothing has come up. I'll click on resolve the case. Once I resolve the case, then we haven't done any change to that. So it should automatically post the item to the timeline. So as you see over here, I just refreshed the timeline. Now here, the information is there. So that's it folks. This is how you basically control the timeline posting automatically by the system by navigating to the activity feeds configuration or activity feeds rule. Activity feeds configuration does at a table level and activity feed rule comes at an individual record level for that particular table. So for case record, if you want to disable everything for the case record, you just go to activity feeds configuration and change from activate to deactivate. So that's it. Thanks for watching.